All right guys, in this next video, we're gonna demonstrate abdominal evisceration and how to dress the abdominal evisceration. Diane's gonna be our EMT. Um, ABCs are good. And I'm gonna put up a picture right now of an abdominal evisceration. And typically these eviscerations are minimal bleeders. And so as dramatic um, and distracting this injury could look to you and you wanna dress it as fast as possible, we actually address this in the secondary after the patient's stabilized, we're in the back of the ambulance, um, not in the primary. So resist the urge, if there's no active bleeding, resist the urge to dress it in the primary. Um, and as, as we address it, I'm gonna put that picture of the evisceration up again. We're gonna use, we need two multi-trauma dressings, also known as abdominal trauma pads. Um, and go ahead and open one of them, Diane. Uh huh, and then pull it out, and kind of like open it up. Let, let's see, let's see how how big it is, and describe what you feel. It's soft. It's kind of like a blanket-like thing. Okay. Um, and it's thick, right? It's thick, yeah. It's thick. It's thicker than traditional gauze. Yes. Okay, good. And so we want um, an appropriate size of the abdominal pad to cover the evisceration. <laughs> we're going to take sterile water, and we're going to soak it in sterile water. We're going to soak the abdominal trauma pad in sterile water. The goal, there's two objectives with dressing evisceration. We're mimicking the internal environment of the abdomen, so which is moist and then warm, which is going to come second to this. So go ahead and cover, cover that, yeah. And then typically, let's, let's have it this big. So let's have even smaller than that. Let's go right, even and then fold the other side in, just like that. And then we want to take an occlusive dressing. So go ahead, and, and what can we use out of this that's an occlusive dressing? We could use the plastic one. Okay, so go ahead. Go ahead and remove the plastic from the whole thing. Awesome. And why, why plastic and not this? Oh, look. There's a tiny hole right here. Um, yeah, plastic. Why? It's a lot more um, like strong. You won't see these holes, so this way you won't have any air. Um, and what do we not want going through this? Um, the abdominal oil. Well, air. We don't want air going going through this. So that's what that's what makes it an occlusive dressing. Okay. And so go ahead and cover. Cover this, and we want to make sure that the dressing is under the occlusive dressing. Okay. And I'll hold this for you. Make sure. Yeah. Try to get it get it under there. This is great. Yeah. And then go ahead and we're going to get some tape. And how many sides do we tape it on, Diane? We want to tape it on all four sides. All four. Why not just three? Otherwise, it would get in and there's no point. You know, unlike when you're doing it with the name of Bollocks, you don't want air to exhale. Yeah. Because there's no point in this case. So it's not like a lung. Um, we don't have to, be, have to worry about air coming out. We just don't want any air coming in. So we're going to tape it on four sides. Um, another common kind of mistake that students tend to want to do is they want to, they have the urge to push the um, evisceration back into the abdomen. So that's a big no-no. We don't push anything back into where we found them. So ideally we would have maybe fatter tape, some two inch silk tape, but Diane's doing a good job with this. And we got the last side right here. Awesome job, Diane. And then what's the last step to keep the patient uh, patient warm? You want to open the other? All right, go dressing. ahead and open it, yep. So if you don't have another dressing or if you don't want to use another dressing or if you have a blanket, um, anything that reaches the goal of providing warmth to the site. So the goal is to to provide moisture and warmth to the abdominal evisceration. And then you reassess en route to the hospital. See you in the next video.